that we call ASSIST and some of the research that we do. And then uh, after my talk, I'm going to hand off to some of our students who are going to show you uh, some actual samples of experiments and uh, science and things that we're making here in the labs uh, at NC State. So ASSIST is a research center looking at healthcare. There's a really big opportunity uh, in terms of taking care of people. We have a very large population that's becoming elderly and it needs health care. And there's also a trend uh, globally, not just in the United States, of an increase in chronic diseases and things that take away from people's quality of life and take away um, uh, from your income because it costs a lot of money to, to be treated for, for health issues and things. And so in ASSIST we said, well, let's get a bunch of engineers together and look at creating wearable electronics, uh, you know, like you know, wristwatches and things like that that are kind of traditional wearables, but then even non-traditional things like just the clothing that you wear and embed electronics into them that are going to help you to monitor your health and the state of, you know, are you healthy or are you starting to become not healthy, but also your exposure to the environment because it's your exposure to the environment that changes your health. Uh, it, that exposure is not just the air that you breathe and the pollution and things like that that hurt your health, but also it's what you eat it's what you drink, it's, you know, I just ran into something and it impacted my body, that might have hurt me, right? So those are all exposures and we want to monitor these things so that we can provide feedback directly to an individual to say, you know what, something is starting to change that's not good, let's make a change. Uh, you know, maybe you need to get a little more sleep, we need to eat a little healthier, we need to do something to stay healthy. We also want to gather all that information at the societal level to understand why, like, why do diseases happen? Why do people get sick? Why do these chronic things that are debilitating, they're expensive, they're costly, they're not very fun, what, why do they happen? And in order to do that, we need to have a whole lot more data and information than what we have today. So the idea of using wearable devices to do all this monitoring and all this data collection, all this informing, is not really a new idea. There's products on the market like the Fitbit you've probably heard of, which can track how many steps that you've taken. There are things that look at your heart rate. Um, the challenge is that a lot of the people that need this health are not really technology adopters, right? A lot of maybe your grandparents aren't necessarily the ones going out on the very first day and buying the Apple Watch or, or things like this. Uh, we need things that are very, very simple to use. Uh, we also find that there's a really big issue with these products that people buy electronics and they tend to use them for a very short period of time before they just throw them in a drawer and stop using them. And so we did some research to understand why is it that these products don't have really long-term utility and, and usefulness. And one of the biggest problems we found is the battery. People hate having to charge a battery. Imagine maybe a lot of you have either uh, music players or cell phones or things that you have to constantly charge, and that's a pain. So we want to completely get rid of the battery, but still have electronics that work all the time. Uh, and unfortunately, no one has invented yet electronics that work with no energy at all. That would be really cool. Uh, so we need to find energy somewhere and so our idea is to actually use ourselves as a power supply. So if we use, for example, our body heat, you eat food, you burn calories, your body is always generating heat. And heat is a form of energy, so we can take that energy and we can convert it into electricity with some really cool materials that you'll hear about in a moment and see a demonstration on. Uh, we also move around a lot. I, I tend to do it when I'm talking. I can't stand still as I'm giving a presentation. And so, we have both gross motion, we have small motion, like you know, you're, you're ty typing or you're tapping your foot. There's crazy stuff like juggling with your head on fire. Right? There's ways that we're always moving and we can convert that motion into energy as well. Uh, so this is called energy harvesting. When you're taking energy from your environment around you and you're harvesting it. So we want to increase as much supply of energy as we can. But that has to be balanced with the amount of energy the electronics need to consume in order to drive these sensors and wirelessly communicate with your cell phone and do all these things that you want to make the information useful. And so we're also looking at how do we make electronics require a whole lot less power. And one of the ways to do that is to leverage something called nanotechnology. So nanotechnology is the study of things at very, very, very small scale. It happens that most materials, when you get from a bulk material, which is something that you, know, you can see, you can hold your hand or whatever, bring it down to a nano scale, which is very, very tiny, you know, where you're looking at individual atoms or small groups of atoms and compounds and things, the material properties change. And one of the cool things about those changes is that you can 
through those changes, get much more efficient energy storage and things called supercapacitors. You can do increased harvesting of energy with these thermal harvesters and these motion harvesters I mentioned. And you also can do much lower computation. <coughs> if you think about the microprocessor is kind of the heart of a computer. We can get to do much more efficient computation, much more efficient wireless radio transmission where we can transmit the data. So instead of using Bluetooth, which you might be familiar with, we've created powers that, uh, uh, radios that are you know, a thousand times lower power than Bluetooth. So your energy can go a much longer time to be useful. Um, so as a center, our main goal is we want to get rid of the battery. We want to leverage a lot of research that's been done in nanotechnology that's making these technologies kind of practical and useful. We want to use those to correlate your environmental exposure to, to how it affects your health. And then the last piece is this thing called big data analysis. We're going to collect all this information. And then what do you do with it? What we want to do is we want to take your heart rate and your body's hydration level and your glucose, your blood sugar level, you know, all of these kind of health things and then correlate them to your exposure to ozone and to how many hours you slept and all these different things and then study for patterns to understand what are the causes, what are the interrelationships between all of these different factors and how does that relate back to um, you staying healthy. Because if you stay healthy, you're going to be happier, you're going to have higher quality of life and you're not going to spend all that money on you know, hospital bills and medicines and all these kinds of things. So that's a, a very, very quick high level overview of what we're trying to do. There is a whole lot of work that remains to be done in developing these low power sensors and the energy harvesters and all these systems. And so we're hopeful that if you find this exciting, this is something that you might think down the road you'd want to become a part of this and, and help us to uh, figure out how to help people live happier and healthier.